Hello and welcome back. In the last VGA video I built this output PCB, so I designed it and soldered it, and I've connected that back to the system using these bits of breadboard and a little bit of strip board that I soldered connectors onto. I've also next going to be doing the pallet PCB, which we've designed will sit beside that on the final board, and I want to kind of work out the right way of connecting those up to the system, especially as once this is gone, we're not going to have any breadboards until I start building the sprite circuit. So let's have a look at the back plane as it's currently evolving and see if we can make a temporary connection board. Right, I've designed the output and the pallet PCBs. I'm going to need some way of testing them. So I'm going to make a little sub board that they plug into. Now at the moment, all the PCBs are plugging into this temporary back plane. And what I kind of like the idea of is a temporary backplane for these two boards that will sit above this, help me make the cross connections, but also provide a robust test environment. So I've just noticed on this temporary back plane, this corner wasn't quite right. I need to watch out for that. And the temporary back plane is narrower than I had planned for the final uh, back plane. Now I'm going to leave this the wrong way around because it's going to make cross-connecting these boards a lot easier. I'm going to label where pin zero is though. A lot of these connectors though I'm going to have to send fly wires across for. I didn't prepare for needing some of these lines to go to more than one subboard out of the temporary back plane, but if I daisy chain these two connectors on, I think that gives me what I need. Ah, I spelt it wrong. That's better. I kind of think that gives us everything we need. Get rid of all of that. And let's annoy everyone by trying the auto router. I think I may need an extra copy of the sink as well. It's obvious it could have done with a bit more space down here. I could hand root it better, but temporary planes I want to uh, just generate.
Now this tiny little board is going to cost me a couple of dollars to tag on that order. I could do this exact job with some ribbon cable but doing it with this has the benefit of it will provide a bit of uh, rigidity to the board connections. Four dollars. No, two dollars. Should be a fun board. Do wish they'd give us an option for less than five. Missed a couple of pins. Now I've still got the super fine tip on here that I put on for the D15 connector on the VGA. I'll see how it goes. Apart from those first pairs of pins where I made a mistake, what I'm doing here is just tacking each of the connectors on with one pin because it's very easy to move. Now I pick it up and see if I missed any, which I didn't. I can see some of these are slightly off, but with just one pin I can just kind of bend the header into a good angle. I will change this tip back to the larger one. I think it's better at transferring heat to these types of pins. I'll put up with it for now because it's quite time consuming to wait for the iron to cool down and change the tip. These are the turned pin females that are done. Interestingly enough, JRC has put the serial number for the board down there and not uh, where I said it should go. Maybe I misclicked in the order. I had to bend the pins up on this header because it was a right angled one. It's also one spot short, but that's not needed for any of the boards here. I'm not going to be able to flip this over with them all in place, but I'm just kind of checking I've got everything I need. Shall I try it? Because this started out as a right angled one, the pins are a bit longer. I will have to trim these down. Okay, that was actually quite successful.
Now we're going to use this as just a way to support these pins. Now I don't have the pallet PCB to plug into this yet, but this cross connect will provide quite a lot of physical rigidity to the positioning of the boards. Okay, well hopefully that's all I need to do. So I'm going to clear away my soldering stuff and uh, get the build back out. Right, we're going to have to be quite careful plugging this in. Now I have put the little feet on the back so it won't uh, tear up my uh, board. have to be very careful with these because bent pins are difficult to track down sometimes. Okay, I'm going to move these address connections back and this data connection. Now at the moment the address lines are kind of irrelevant but this little bridging board is going to give us some nice rigidity I think. Now we know we need the sink lines over there. I'm going to look for a shorter six wire cable. And that was VJ SIG. Probably isn't the best named connection, but that's got the sink and the power and ground in it. Now I did duplicate that out over here. That's the clock and the extra ground connection. So I've done the same with the memory regions line where I've kind of added it over here. So the load line I can take from over there and the pallet region line I can take from over there as long as I cross connect these. I need six wires. This is a five wire connection. Now I do need to make the actual pallet input connections as well. I can put DuPont headers into these turned pin sockets to make temporary connections. That one is a bit tight but it does fit. Now in theory that's all connected so let's power it up and give it a try. That's a good sign anyway. That is reasonably rigid. I'm going to remake a couple of these wires because some of them are a little bit spotty I think. I want to do some work here. So this is the proxy circuit for the sprite merge which is basically it just introduces the one clock delay that we know that circuit is going to do to the signal. So it's outputting eight bits of palette index but it takes in four bits of palette index from the top of tile data and it's just a single 574 D type. But I want to get that off this board because that's the one thing that we're not going to be putting on the palette PCB. Now that's where the signal will actually come from when it's in PCB form. Let's grab a nice long cable and plug it in there. Lowest pin here is the least significant bit. Got the 574 in there. Let's pull those four inputs down with this resistor array. Put the inputs in there. So those two are ground. And that's power. Clock into the copy line. And the outputs can go in there. Let's run the bars demo again. So this is working nice and stably. And of course, 
when I have the PCB for the pallet, all of this goes away and this secondary wiring simplifies a lot. I'm going to try and get better wires for some of these connections though. Oh, well, I hope you found this interesting. It was a little bit of a painful experience for me. It's ended up taking uh, about 40 minutes longer than I thought it would be once I got the board soldered, but I'm where I need to be for getting the pallet board plugged in and also for stably removing this to do some work on some other parts of the system. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.